I'm just going to be honest with you. I grew up in a family of alcohol abuse. And as I got older, I understood that those things are just pure evil. Islam helped me find peace with those things and helped me stay on a good path. Five years ago, I reverted to Islam and I want to share a little bit about my story because I've never spoken about it on my page and I always get asked questions about it. So around eight years ago, I met my husband. He is a Lebanese Muslim. There was never any pressure on me to revert. Um, I actually spent a couple of years doing a bit of research before I made my decision. I'm just going to be honest with you. I grew up in a family of alcohol abuse and as I got older, I understood that those things are just pure evil. Islam helped me find peace with those things and helped me stay on a good path. Especially now, since having my family, it's so much more important to me. It was so much when I was doing my research that aligned with me and my morals and I just knew that this was the start of my journey. Then fast forward, I reverted, me and my husband got Islamically married and a couple of years later after that, we started our own family. There's just one thing I wanted to address. I always get asked by people, but if you are Muslim, how like how can you be a Muslim if you don't wear the hijab? There's things that are compulsory in the religion, but those things are between me and God. And that is what I love about the religion because I have been in Islam for the past five years, but I'm learning every day and I'm still on my own journey. People have this perception that Islam controls us as women when actually it puts women above all it's not that we or i can pick and choose it's more that it's within my own time i'm not perfect nobody in our religion claims to be perfect if i'm honest with you i would rather be realistic and real rather than set expectations of myself that i might not stick to all the time i'd rather not okay one day i'm gonna wear a hijab the next day i'm not going to wear a hijab Islam does not promote and is not founded upon violence. This concept of spreading Islam throughout the world in a violent fashion does not come from the preachings of the religion. It is not like the way empires and terrorists make it look. Here's some things you will find in the Quran. So the first verse that talks about violence actually says, you have been commanded to fight, though you hate to fight. It teaches us when to fight and what are the limits, but it is not praiseworthy. You should try to avert it, try to avoid war and not resort to violence. It is in the Quran that the strong person is not someone who can beat someone down. The strong person is the one who can control anger. You will read, whoever takes a life, it will be as if they have killed all of humanity. Respond to evil with good. Speak kindly even to the ignorant. Think well of each other. Don't spread gossip. Don't insult those who worship other than Allah. And if enemy wants peace, then you should accept it. However you may analyze events going on in the world, just know that none of it comes from the religion itself. People may be retaliating. The biggest takeaway is that it prohibits fighting those who are not fighting. Muslim women are oppressed, you've heard. We have to face patriarchy both within and outside of our communities, just like the rest of the women in the world do. So why are we focusing on Islam and religion? Anyway, let's take a look at some things. Firstly, the hijab. It is mandatory, but not all women wear it. Modesty is highly regarded, but everyone's journey is different. Does wearing the hijab make women oppressed? No. Many Westerners think unveiling frees women of some kind of oppression, but do you know what I think? Telling any woman how to uncover their body is oppressive. 
let's take a look at some of the women's rights and how we are looked after in the religion. So first one, finances. If a woman is to make her own money or has her own money, that is a token for her own use or her luxuries. Any necessities should be provided by her husband. If that's the way our household chooses to live, then us as women, we're looked after. Obviously in modern times, more women are working and more women will probably be splitting things financially. Secondly, when we marry, we have the right to keep our own name. And if we don't, and we choose to take our husband it's not because we belong to them islam elevates the position of a woman in society and treats them on an equal footing with men and in some cases for instance a mother will be given precedence over men people will drive the divide between our worlds but these issues are systemic in politics culturally socially all over the globe not islam itself This is my new series where I will be breaking apart misconceptions of Islam. After sharing my story as a revert, it's become apparent that we live amongst many Islamophobists. I have received comments that are ignorant towards a religion, rude or are just completely not true. In no way do I feel like I need to explain myself, any of my past actions or answer to any Steve or Karen. But if there's one thing I can do with my platform in 2024, it will be to educate those who have misunderstandings or are simply interested in learning more. I have had a few comments saying that they may have got some idea about the religion because of how it's portrayed in the media. So my goal for this is to post at least once a week on a new topic. So please follow along. If there are any questions you have, pop them in the comments. Or if there's something that doesn't sit right with you or you feel like you have a misunderstanding, also let me know. Even if you're a revert and you just want to know more, let me know because I want to shape more content around this in 2024 and I just want to break the stigma a little bit. Part one is going to be uploaded tomorrow and then I'll try and stick to at least once a week after that. Ramadan is coming up, so what is it and why do we celebrate it? Ramadan is the ninth and holiest month of the Islamic lunar calendar. And for the entirety of the month, Muslims around the world will be fasting from sunrise to sunset. This means no food, no water, and most importantly, no sinning. One year, you might be fasting until 9.30 in peak summer, and then so many years forward, you'll be fasting until 4 p.m. in the winter. Every night when we break fast, i.e. when we eat, we will do this with families. So why do we do it? Firstly, participating in Ramadan and fasting is one of the five pillars of Islam. And one of the biggest takeaways is gratefulness because it reminds us of all those that are less fortunate in the world that have little food and water. It helps us to learn self-discipline, developing as a person, getting closer to our creator, breaking unhealthy habits. It is like a full body cleanse. During the month, we perform charitable acts and give to those who are less fortunate. For me, I am obligated to give 2.5% of my yearly earnings. So the big question everyone has, is it safe? Absolutely. There are so many non-Muslims around the world that fast every day. You probably have heard of it as intermittent fasting. There are some people who are exempt from fasting. So ladies who are pregnant, people who are breastfeeding, anyone that is sick, some of the elderly, although some elderly will still fast. And also for women, during the days they are menstruating, they will not be fasting. 